we are in existence as part of uh, a brilliant engineering university for the last 14 years. And if you look at it uh, recently, Thapar University was ranked the number one private university in the country by the best international rating agency, Times Higher Education, THE. So, and our computer science program is one of the best in the country. If you look at our business school, we are about 14 years old. And last week, we got the intimation from AACSB. That is the most respected accreditation body. Only 17 business schools in India are accredited. And we got the message from them. Our final report for accreditation is accepted. Now one progress report and a visit we are more or less guaranteed that we will be accredited. When we are accredited, we, are, we will be the youngest business school to be accredited. And we will be probably one of the 25 uh, schools in the country. We are talking about out of uh, probably about 3,000 schools. And Thapar University, uh, uh, with a tradition of 60 plus years, brings uh, uh, the business school can derive those processes for achieving educational and career excellence. So that is what we get by becoming the part of a great uh, engineering university. Today, Thapar University is not just an engineering university. We have a solid uh, economics program, psychology program, a brilliant school of liberal arts and sciences this year. We have founded, we even have faculty members from uh, 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 Italy and uh, United States and uh, Australia. I'm not just talking about Indians, Australian, Australian and Italian, Italian. So we have a diverse group of global scholars teaching on all these programs. Our admission process is slightly, you could have an excellent score in one of those tests, but there's no guarantee that you uh, go in. But you could also have a a poor score, but if you if you uh, convince during the interview and other activities, because it's a kind of a bit long drawn process. But once they go through that, and if they can convince that they are uh, somebody unique, and uh, they they will contribute to enriching that uh, learning experience of the group, then they have a good chance of uh, getting admitted. So we don't have a a cut off, a unidimensional cut off. It is always a composite performance we, we look at. We do extremely well with the two of those uh, two diversity you talked about. Gender diversity, for the last three years, we are either about 50 to 53 percentage females. We have uh, more females than uh, uh, males. And other background uh, uh, disciplinary diversity, we are doing extremely well. We have more non-engineers today than engineers. We started as all engineer uh, school to now probably about uh, 60, 65 percentage of non-engineers. We are doing very, very well. Uh, geographic diversity, we are pan North India. We don't have that many uh, students from the South, but, uh, but we are open to um, having students from uh, all regions and all regions of the world. Now, I would say this is one of the most important questions. If, you, if I look at the last five years, it has always been 90 plus. And many students, they go back to their family business or, uh, you know, they're not interested. Otherwise, we could have uh, gone beyond 95. It's 90 plus. And if I look at last year, the average salary was about 7 lakhs and the highest was about uh, 14 or 16, uh, that range. And if I look at the five year uh, highest, it's somewhere around 24 lakhs highest. But average was fluctuating uh, between 6 and 7. And this uh, fortunately COVID uh, did not affect us that much. What COVID has done is it slightly extended the placement season. That means we had to kind of uh, sit quiet uh, and do everything right and wait for some more months to place uh, our typical 88, uh, 90 this year. But generally it is up to 92, um, 91.5. So 90 is a good number for our placement.
I've worked uh, across the world. I've uh, taught in seven different universities across the world, US, Japan, Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, um, South Korea. I think uh, if you come to our campus, our campus and infrastructure is as good or better than these uh, top universities in the world. You name it, whether it is auditorium or whether it is classrooms or uh, cafeteria or hostels, it's, it's like a you know, three plus star uh, hotel. In some areas, it is more like a five star. So, and, and also, we are, I'm not talking about me, but we as a small family of LMTSM, we are very particular about keeping our campus clean and beautiful. And it is green. And pro I myself have posted uh, hundreds of pictures of green, beautiful campus on Google Maps. If you want to uh, get an idea, there are hundreds of beautiful pictures of our campus. Those are those, those are amateur pictures. It's not kind of uh, framed well. So that means real uh, campus you can see there. It's a fantastic campus. I would not say that location is not important. Location is definitely important. But if I look at the last uh, five years of our business school's existence, see, I joined the school about seven and, seven and a half years ago. We get top class professors coming from all over the world. Uh, uh, an airport is about 35 uh, minutes from uh, our, our school. Chandigarh airport is 35 minutes. So location is important. But even more important is innovative curriculum, you know, excellent seeking pedagogy, our corporate connect, our global connect. We even have programs where students can spend three semesters here, go, go to the US and spend one full semester and a summer. You get an MBA from us and an MS uh, from the US. And if you get a STEM MS, they can also stay there without any visa issues for three years. So we have great global connect extraordinary faculty if you look at our nir of ranking a 14 year old school we are already at 54 nir of ranking and if you look at the research component of our nir of ranking we are 19 we are better than several iems 19 this is a data students can go and verify so we do very well and we are very dynamic with respect to curriculum design and pedagogy you know, the general idea of any business school in the world is corporations at the center and the government and community and employees and citizens all around the corporations. So they are the ones creating wealth. Our business school, our paradigm is both corporations and the society at the center. So the traditional assumption is that there is a free market out there. The role of every corporation is to maximize shareholder wealth. So our assumption is that everything we do, corporations or society or government or business schools should maximize stakeholder wealth, overall societal well-being. If a society is doing very well, by default, corporations do well. When corporations do well, that will have a positive reinforcing effect. So when we think about pro-social, no society can su sustain itself if it is not pro-social. So the, the, there is always a tension between a business school or a, or a governmental institution purely believing in uh, free market without any controls or all controlled. So we, we really think about a third way of an approach where both corporations and the community benefit. One last point is our mission statement has four important pillars, global sensitivity, excellent seeking, social entrepreneurial mindset, and true professionalism. This is a very unique. You look at any business school's mission, they talk about we want to develop leaders and we want to develop managers and professionals. Of course, we want to develop great leaders. But the basis for everything is understanding the world well, have a 
social, have a social entrepreneurial view that is a pro social view. Social entrepreneurial view is not to make everybody social entrepreneurs. But the idea is what is good for the corporation should be good for the community and the country and the world at large. A true professional is also someone who would be seeking excellence. What is seeking excellence? Wanting to do better than before. And the core of excellence seeking behavior is your empathy. And also, by the way, an extraordinary empathy is what makes us human that differentiates us from animals. So these four pillars, those are very important for us. The type of students I want is someone who is open-minded, pro-social and empathetic. So there was an interesting study in the United States. I know he's one of the youngest professors at Wharton Business School. His name is Adam Grant. His study shows that every organization in the US would have about 15 to 20 percentage givers, about 60 percentage matchers, and the rest takers. But great organizations are built by givers, not matchers. Matchers, matchers means I do it for you, you do it for me some kind of a reciprocal relationship and takers means I do minimum, but, but I take uh, the most. So great organizations are bit, built by givers, not only organizations, but also countries. So we would like to have students who would have a good chance of becoming a giver. And giver is not a loser. Giver is someone who would ultimately achieve a lot for herself and for the organization and for the world. Those are the types of uh, students we would like to have. And exactly those are the types of students we would encourage them to apply. An open mind, if they don't know whether they are a giver or a taker or a matcher, but with an open mind, if they can come in. And empathy is very, very important. Empathy and openness. Why? Because we believe empathy is the mother of excellence. Because you Think about it. You are asking me questions and you, we are recording this for the good of students. So we always do something for others. So when you think about doing something for others, always think about how can I do it better than before? How can I do it better than before? So that is the idea of empathetic openness. We are looking for those kind of students. Seven and a half years ago, I consider uh, our biggest contribution uh, to the school was we came up with a passionate tagline, New India Starts Here. We are very proud of the fact that uh, we believe in uh, uh, a new India and the new India should start at our place. And what is this new India? It's a proud India. It's a clean India. It's a green India. It's a happy India. It's an India where my, our mothers and sisters and uh, um, the wives can walk around, move around freely with pride. That is the new India of our dreams.